G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you. I do hope you are super well. And yes, I'm bringing you another episode about the extraordinarily exciting new camera from my perspective, maybe not everybody's perspective, the ZF from Nikon. This is exciting for lots of reasons, and I think the number one reason for me, as soon as the ZFC came out, it was like, yeah, I love it, but I'd love a full frame version. So not only that, but this is also the first camera that is XP7, has the new focus system, has the new menus, has all sorts of cool features that the Z8 and Z9 have. This is the first time we've seen that trickle down into a mid-tier, almost entry level, but not quite, into a mid-tier camera. This is an exciting advancement for the Nikon Z system and it only bodes well for whatever's gonna happen next. But to be able to get into X-Speed 7, to be able to get into that focus system at this sort of price point, well, it's a great start, and this camera is going to appeal to so many different people. You could be a photojournalist, a vlogger, even wildlife, a portraitist, a wedding photographer, a landscape photographer, or maybe you're just a hipster. And of course, for someone like me, I'm all of those things. This for me, as a professional photographer, this is kind of my weekend camera. This is my third camera, but I don't even have to think of it that way because it's got such good specifications that it can also be absolutely a camera in your bag for all sorts of situations, really for every situation. And the only place that it might differ, say from your Z8 and Z9, in most scenarios is, well, you can't shoot 8K and you can't get 45 megapixels. But on really most of the specs that most of us use all of the time, this is gonna be an amazing B or C camera for the professional that already owns a Z8 or a Z9 or both, or two of either of those. What we're gonna do in this video is look at over 21 different lenses from over seven manufacturers, including Nikon, Sony, Mamiya, Viltrox, TT Artisan, Pergear, Nissi, and more on this awesome retro-inspired full-frame modern XP7 camera. Okay, and we are starting with a brand new lens for the Z mount, and this is the Nissi 15mm f4 fully manual lens. This is actually an aesthetics video. It's not a going out and testing them video. You can look at tons of videos where I've I've tested out every lens on this table, I think, on this channel. We've hit the 600 video mark, which is an astonishing number to me. And if you're gonna test out 21 different lenses, you're not gonna test them out in a video like this because it would be one to two hours long. Nailed the look. I've talked about this Nissi lens in the Nissi video that's out, that this lens looks good on both modern cameras as well as retro-inspired cameras. Now, this is an interesting lens. I think this lens has got a good chance of being paired with the ZF. It's a full frame 24 to 200 f4 to 6.3. Considering what a super zoom this is and it's full frame, it's actually a really awesome travel combo. And as you can see right here, it's quite small. Let's have a look the right way up. Now, I reviewed this lens a few years ago. Check it out up here. This lens is a really competent lens considering the enormous range that it covers, how small and light it is, and the fact that it's also full frame. Works on all of the Z cameras as you would expect, everything from a Z50 up to a Z9. Absolutely great results. It's a cracker, it's a good combo, it looks good. But who doesn't want the orange? I want the orange one. The 14 to 24 f 2.8 S class lens. Also, I think another great companion for the ZF. Now, currently I don't have the small rig bracket on the ZF. And how does it handle? Well, this is a pretty light and comfortable lens. Obviously, any camera that has a flat front just does not give you as much grasp as a camera that has a grip on it. So from my perspective, you know, I'm usually shooting for long periods of time and I will go for ergonomics over aesthetics in this particular case. And here it is, let's fire it up. Okay, we're in black and white mode, that's cool. And well, this performs. <laughs> yeah, it's very fast, it's very cool. 
The 14 to 24 2.8 is an extraordinarily high class lens, certainly has the price tag to match. If you're looking for the best of the best on the Z mount in wide zooms, there's no other place to go than this lens right here. And here we have the Allower shift lens. It allows you to perspective correct. Absolutely fantastic. There is the correction. Whether you're looking up or down, you can correct. Please do let me know in the comments below, would you like to see a video about this lens? Thanks to my dear friend Saeed, who made me these beautiful Z mount lens caps. They're just prototypes. I'd love to make more, but they're cool. Oh, orange is one of my favorite colors. And of course, orange ZF, it's got to match. It's got to match the ZF. Absolutely what I think will be a super duper popular lens to go with the ZF is the 24 to 120 f4. This is an S-class lens. It's extraordinarily high quality. It really is punching above its weight for price, size, stability, super stable on a Z8 and a Z9. And as this camera has got eight stops of stabilization, it's going to be ridiculously stable on this camera as well. You've kind of got a really good size to weight ratio along with a good range of focal lengths. 24 out to 120 gives you a lot of options, high quality in a small package. And let's face it, it looks good. That's what it's all about. Does it look good? Yes. And please check out my review on the 24 to 120 f4. Really good lens. Now at this stage, what we might do just for fun, we've seen the camera here without the small rig grip. In some territories, the small rig grip is going to come with the ZF if you order it early on. I, I, can, I can tell you that's happening in Australia. I'm not sure what other territories that's happening in the world, but this grip, it won't be very expensive even if you have to purchase it, probably somewhere between 30 and $50, I suspect, but it changes how you hold on to the camera. So I'm gonna pop that on. And something that this grip does, besides just giving you a little bit of extra grip, is it also has Arca Swiss on the bottom of it. And so you've got grip, you've still got a tripod mount, but you've also got Arca Swiss. And for some people, that's really awesome. You get a few extra things all at once, and you have full access to the battery and card bay. Now, if you didn't know, this camera uses the ENEL 15C which is a battery that has been used in so many cameras now for over a decade. It's a much larger battery than we find in the ZFC, and this is a good thing. It, this is just such a great all-rounder lens and very stabilized. All right, we can't forget that this camera is a pre-production unit. Who knows what might change with these cameras? Now there's a lens that looks like it was built to go with this body. I have a feeling Nikon's been planning these things for a long time. It looks really nice on there. The proportions are great. It sort of could be cut from the 60s or from today. It's, it's a really good industrial design. Timeless, nice. This is part of the 1.8 range of lenses. We've got a 20, a 24, a 35, a 50, and an 85. This video was shot before the planner arrived, but of course it's here. It's a 135, it is a 1.8, and it is something extraordinary. More coming soon on the planner. Don't be confused by previous old school, even other brands of 1.8 lenses. These 1.8s, are a class unto themselves, and they perform in most cases better than the previous generation 1.4s. Amazing. Which is why this, the, these lenses kind of cover the 1.8 and 1.4 space. There's not that much of a difference in light gathering capabilities. There's not that much of a difference in depth of field, which has then allowed Nikon to make lenses, well, like this. And this is perhaps my favorite lens of all time, which I've talked about in the past, this is the 85 1.2. We had to get there eventually, didn't we? All right, we're gonna go maximum, <laughs> maximum warp with this one. And the reality is when attaching this tiny attachment, what it does is it changes the ergonomics enough to make a lens of this size comfortable, makes it work, makes it be so you could use it all day long. And thus, this combo with the x 7 an absolutely gorgeous 24 megapixel sensor and fast. Check out my epic review of this lens. And these two pieces of hardware, they actually look really, really good together. 
This is a lens that I purchased in 1992 with Mamma Mia RB67. So that is why there is such a massive spacer here because the RB67 is a massive box camera with the film plane way back here, the front of the camera here, massive mirror box in there. But someone decided to make a mount from the Mamiya RB67 to the Z. So a lens that I hadn't used in two decades is brought back to life if you think there's a project that it's suitable for. You can do it. I'm not sure it exactly looks cool, but it's interesting. Of course, everything is fully manual, focus is manual, aperture is manual, and you don't get any metadata. But if you have some of these old lenses lying around and you wanna give them a second life, well, you definitely can. And there we are. Flare is off the charts. <laughs> off the, whoops. We're in 30 frames per second mode. We don't want to be in 30 frames per second mode. You focus it by moving it literally forward and back from the focal plane, which is pretty cool in itself. It actually looks quite sharp. I think I might take it for a spin on the ZF when my orange one arrives. This is a Sony lens. It requires the E to Z adapter to work with it. So here we have a Sony lens, and with these adapters, you get full AF and stabilization and absolutely everything. Megadap, who make this adapter, they keep giving us firmware updates to ensure they add more lenses, new lenses that come out. It includes, for example, the ability to have Tamron E-mount lenses. If you look through my comments, there are people out there that are adapting Sony lenses over to the said mount and they're loving it. They're using it and it's working fine. So ultimately what this allows for is maybe you're a Sony user who is interested in a Z camera and this allows you to have a bit of a play because you've got your whole library of lenses and now you can try them out on, on any Z camera you like, including the brand new ZF. So it's interesting to put Sony, Sony lenses with this retro camera. Anyway, there they are. It works, it's cool, there's full compatibility. Of course, firmware at any point in time can change whether this stuff works, and we as consumers are not in control of that, but it does seem to be working super well for people. A Sony lens on your Nikon ZF. Alrighty, we're getting towards the halfway mark. This is the Viltrox 75mm 1.2. Fully autofocus, fully metadata, fully everything. A lens I really like. I really like it. It's affordable. Now, of course, it is only an APS-C lens. And on a camera like this, this will give you around 10 megapixels. So it might not be exactly the best choice for a 24 megapixel camera might be better on say a Z7, Z7 II, Z8 or Z9, or of course, APS-C cameras. It's up to you, but it's a really nice lens. And yes, we are getting full autofocus, stabilization, and complete aperture control. So that is awesome. Another lens I thought I would share is this kit lens. It's a 50 to 250 APS-C lens. I don't think it'll ever be paired with this as a kit, but of course, if you own it, there is no problem using, as we've just seen, APS-C lenses on a full frame body. You've just got to be prepared to get 10 megapixels instead of 24. It's very compact, gives you a lot of reach. At that long end, you are out at 375 millimeters field of view equivalent. And that's pretty cool. Looks good, small, light, compact. Now to return to the lens that we were looking at before, I definitely think this lens here, if you're contemplating either of these lenses to go with the ZF, this is the one to go with, which is full frame, 24 to 200. Still a huge amount of reach in such a small package. Viltrox has supported this channel very well, sending me the 24, the 35, the 50, and the 85, along with the 75 that we just saw. This is a 24mm full frame lens. Over time, Viltrox has been improving what they're doing, and the newest of Viltrox lenses are really, really good optically. They do not perform at the same level as Nikon S lenses, but like everything in life, 
you get what you pay for, but they are still optically very good. This lens here is a lens that's well regarded that punches above its weight. This is the very first Z lens that I got. It is the 24 to 70 f4 S class lens. Now at the time I thought it's an f4 and my mind was still in the days of f in the previous generation of glass. And I wasn't sure that it was that good, but over time I learned that I was completely incorrect. And Z S class is something completely new. If it's got an S on it, it is very good. And I've just picked this lens up and just played with it and it's absolutely phenomenal. Fast, stabilized, an immense amount of stabilization. It's great. What a great lens. This could be a kit lens. I think it makes perfect sense. It looks good, it's the right sort of size and it delivers great results with good range. Now, of course, the alternative great kit travel lens that gives you a little bit of everything. It's a bit of an all-rounder and it's kind of one lens you could just go with if you really wanted to. And it's super high quality, of course, is that 24 to 120 we saw before. Both of these lenses fit a similar space, but we can see that they are different sizes. Interesting, different prices as well, although I don't think they're that different. If you can, my suggestion probably would be, if you can handle the weight and size, is go for the 24 to 120 f4 if you've got that little bit of extra space because you do get that reach. That extra 50 mil is quite a lot. I'm gonna fire up the f to z adapter for the first time. I'm gonna put on one of the last f lenses that I ever bought. I think the FLED 70 to 200 was the last one. I think this might have been the second to last one. And here is the very big difference and I will show you right here. This is what the new 24 to 70 2.8 S class top of the range lens looks like size and weight. And that is the difference. That is quite a big difference. In the case of this particular lens, we can see clearly that they've managed to make this 24 to 70 smaller even taking into account all of this extra stuff that's going on here. In other words, this one needed to be this far, this far from the image plane, and this one only needs to be this far. So there's some engineering changes that have certainly happened here. The advantage of the F to Z adapter is you can use all of your old F lenses and anything that has been designed and released in roughly the last 20 years, you'll get aperture and autofocus as well on top of it. This lens has VR along with the IBIS, so I'm not 100% sure what happens with F lenses. I presume their VR is engaged, whether it's engaged at the normal levels or not. That really worked very well, looked super, and I'm not sure that it is aesthetically the most pleasing kid on the block, but the thing is, you can still do it. And that's pretty awesome, which does segue us over nicely to the fact that here's the 70 to 200 and they're not going to end up being that different in size. It's going to be a little bit longer, but this is the Z70 to 200 2.8. I've had this lens for about a decade. One of my favorite F lenses, even so chromatic aberration, purple fringing, just not fast to focus, noisy not sharp in the corners. The the difference between the top of the range F 85 millimeter lens and the top of the range Z 85 millimeter lens is quite profound. Now it is more expensive, the Z one. You could not call this one perfect. It just wasn't. There was a lot of things about it that were not perfect. That Z 85 mil 1.2 is, if it's not perfect, it's it's so close you can't see the difference. I'm happy to pay that extra difference for something that takes me so close to perfection. Not all lenses are made smaller and obviously perfection comes with cost. Size would be part of that cost. But when you take the F to Z adapter into account, it's pretty good, like it's working really nicely. And of course, this lens was never stabilized and now it is because we're on a beautiful Z class camera which does have stabilization. It's lovely how you can bring new life to these old lenses via stabilization 
via the EVF, allowing for new opportunities that you didn't have before. Right now I'm shooting in black and I've got the black and white mode selected, so everything's looking kind of cool. And aberrations, color fringing, can't be seen. Certainly one good way around it. Now this APS-C lens from TT Artisan, it's a 35mm knocked 0.95 lens. This might be the lens so far which most makes this camera look like a retro camera. It's all metal construction. It's actually been designed with some old school cues. Looks awesome. Obviously APS-C has its disadvantages as we've talked about. You're only going to get 10 megapixels. There's no data that comes through so when we look through here yes we can absolutely see the image circle. It's a very easy to use lens. I, I actually quite like this lens and considering its price point, it's fun. And as long as you only want roughly 10 megapixels, you might be able to crop a little bit larger. Be interesting for me to try and work that out. Another lens that looks pretty old school is this 35mm 1.4 full frame lens from Pergear. Again, it's a super affordable lens, fully manual. You've got to control the aperture and you've got to control the focus. You don't get any metadata. There's all the usual pros and cons. We're talking ZF, we're talking retro. It looks cool. It is full frame, so it matches the sensor. You get all of those 24 megapixels. It's kind of cute, kind of fun. Now, there's probably not a better lens to show off retro awesomeness than this 55 millimeter 1.2 and the only downside is you've got to have the f to z adapter in the middle there's no way around that that used to be where the mirror box flipped up and down can't be changed this is a gorgeous lens they still hold their value quite well today amazing 1.2 super clicky i think i might have to take this lens out on the zf shooting black and white only just to see the sort of creamy bocaliciousness that I love so much with this traditional lens from the 70s and 80s. A 50 millimeter 1.2 lens. It'd be interesting to see how the old Nikon 1.2 and this 1.2 compare. 55, 50 mil, pretty similar. Optically, again, it's not up there with S-class lenses, but you don't pay for it. And that's, that's, that's actually nice and looks really nice in black and white. I think for fun, we're gonna to have to do a bit of a shoot with some of these lenses that have a bit of chromatic aberration or they have various characteristics of which black and white completely mitigates it. But that gives you an idea. And like the 85mm 1.2, it's going to be much more comfortable using over a long period of time if you've got something like the small rig grip adapter. There it is, looking good, will work magnificently and that's absolutely the case. Fast, stabilized, oh my God. <laughs> it's interesting, the stabilization seems to have some logic. I'll try and explain the logic that I think I'm seeing. You're moving and it's a bit more flexible. And then when you wanna go still, it actually then goes into a different mode, which is kind of a still mode. They're trying to lock you off mode. And I think I can kind of see the differences. And I think I can see them because this IBIS is so powerful that when it changes between the two, the locked off is really quite locked off. For someone who has shot in low light for my entire career, the first time I went out to shoot something with a 35mm camera, I was about halfway through high school. It is just shy of 40 years ago. And the tools available to me then were a tripod. That's it. That's how you dealt with nighttime, a tripod. There were no other tools. You couldn't just move around your ISO like we do today. Yes, we had faster films, but if you put a fast film in, then you had to use all of that film. So that wasn't always the best way out, especially when you're a kid and you don't have multiple bodies and you can't just change stuff. So we have ISO, but we also have in-body image stabilization. If you are shooting things that are not moving or are moving slowly, this is another tool that gives us the ability to shoot in the dark. And then we have a third tool that certainly wasn't available to a kid, which is these fast, these ridiculously fast lenses, 1.2 lenses. I suspect the lens I was using back then was something like a 3.5 to a 5.6 or a 6.3 zoom lens. I just had the one lens. So many tools at our hands now to be able to go out at nighttime and capture 
astonishing high quality images. I mean, you'll see in my videos, I will go and shoot at base ISO handheld with this gear at night in a city. You know, and I'm doing quarter second, eighth of a second, maybe sometimes even half of a second exposures. It's glorious. And of course, sometimes you want the things that move to move. Sometimes you want that, so it's actually a bonus. Anyway, wow. Wow how things have changed. This is one of Nikon's Z Retro inspired lenses. These are relatively affordable lenses. They are a largely composite construction made to look retro. You can also get non-retro versions of exactly the same lenses. Compact, light, relatively affordable, and they are relatively fast lenses. In the case of this one, it is a 28 millimeter 2.8. There's also a 40 millimeter 2.0 gives the desired result and does look absolutely retro. The gorgeous, ridiculous 70 to 200 2.8 S, an absolute workman-like lens that will be in most professional kit bags. These things are built to last. They are built like tanks and this has the optical performance to go with it. How does it look and feel on a ZF? Well, it looks cool. Yeah, what a lens. It look, and it looks great. It's really, it's, I've got to say, this is a lens that I know really well, and it's fantastic to see it performing with the XP7 processor on a mid-tier camera. This is really cool. It's actually really exciting. And I just felt it then because this is a lens I use a lot. It's a lens I use for work a lot, as opposed to my artistic creations where I'll go out with my fast primes. Client work is often about capturing lots of things, lots of different focal lengths in a hurry. So you will be using your fast zooms, your 24 to 70 or your 70 to 200. These are just ridiculously common lenses. That felt good, it looked good, it was highly responsive, very excited. The final step, we are going to pop the teleconverter on this lens. This is, in this case, I'm just trying out the 1.4 teleconverter on the 70 to 200, taking you out to 280, only giving you one extra stop, taking you to F4. Awesome. And still crazy fast. Hasn't changed the speed. This really is an amazing sort of photojournalism or wedding sort of combo. I mean, you could absolutely have a second or third photographer working with a kit like this, nailing it, looking cool, but just getting some of the best optical performance you can get. All right, everybody. Well, that was just a bit of fun looking at the brand new ZF, which is such an exciting camera, not just because it's a retro camera, but because it is the trickle down of Z8 and Z9 and XP7 and focus systems and all of this other stuff. Like it's more than that. It's things like the skin smoothing. It's things like the Bluetooth connection and it's things like pre-release. All of this technology is in this camera and it's now at a middle price point and it bodes so well for the future. Very exciting. I'd love to know which was your favorite lens of that group of lenses. What lenses will you put on a ZF if you're planning on getting a ZF and which color ZF will you get? It's been so good to see you. And if this is your first time here, I'd love to see you again. So please do subscribe, please share and please like. All right, bye for now.